Hi, welcome to SBR Sports Fix. My name is Peter Loshak. Today is Friday, September 15th. It's week three of college football. We've all been uh, analyzing these lines all week long, ready for uh, for the main uh, Saturday slate of games to uh, kick off tomorrow. And right now we're going to take a look at uh, Missouri and uh, and Purdue. A very interesting matchup here with Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. Steve, thanks for being with us. I'm glad that you are uh, covering this game, that you chose this game to cover because uh, a lot of people are uh, looking at this one, scratching their heads, thinking if there's an obvious value here or not because Purdue of course has been a great bet ATS so far in their uh, first two games right they uh, they 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 lost by less than 10 points to Louisville in week one as a huge uh, underdog and then as a small favorite they blew out Ohio so two big covers by Purdue so far and then Missouri 0-2 against the spread although their last loss against South Carolina they did outgain South Carolina so not sure if we want to uh, jump all over Purdue again here getting some points but it's certainly tempting considering how undervalued Purdue has clearly been over the first two weeks. The line is seven or seven and a half. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. What can you tell us about this line? Great introduction as always, Peter. Thank you. Yes, you hit on a number of points. And and you said the, the sort of magic word for me, especially for this game, is value. So we're trying to find value as we always are. And of course, there are a number of ways to do that in college football betting. You know, you can do it in football performance ways or Maybe there are some personnel possibilities. There are betting data markers or signals, etc. In this case, in the case of this game, we have more than one indicator of value from my perspective. So let's jump right into it here. Purdue entered the season super undervalued. Like you said, it's, it's evidenced by their, their first two margin of victory against the spread wins. Those two games, they covered by 18 and a half and 20 points. I mean, that's just huge. So totally undervalued. Mizzou, on the other hand, appears to be just the opposite. Their margin of victory against the spread through their first two games, negative seven and negative 20 and a half. So it seems like, wow, one super overvalued, the other super undervalued. But let's take a look. Let's really, you know how I like to do this. We're gonna, Mm -hmm. we're gonna look under the hood and we're really gonna examine this. So looking at Mizzou's last game, that precipitated the firing of their defensive coordinator, okay? Mizzou opened as a four-point home favorite, and they closed as a a two-and-a-half-point home favorite. The final score was 31-13. to So it looks like Mizzou got killed at home, right? Where was their offense? Where was their defense? Somebody needs to get fired. And so they did. They fired their defensive coordinator, Damani Cross. But let's really look at the production here. Mizzou's offensive production, That game, 423 yards. South Carolina's offensive production was just 359 yards. If you convert those offensive yards to points, Peter, the average yards per point in college football, average roughly the last uh, five years, is about 14.3 yards per point. So let's just convert that. Mizzou's offensive production should equal 29.58 points in that game. And South Carolina's should have equated to 25.1 25.1 points in that game. That's a difference of 4.48 points in favor of Mizzou. So based on offensive production of each team, Mizzou should have won that game by nearly four and a half points. That's a figure that, that's good enough to beat both the closing and the opening point spread. But there's a tremendously misleading final score, 31-13, and that was primarily the result of turnovers and special teams play. And those are two wildly inconsistent predictive metrics. So turnovers, you hear me say this every year, Peter, so this is like a mantra practically. Turnovers as a statistical category, that's the most impactful yet most unpredictable or random of the critically significant college football metric. I wanted to address the firing of defensive coordinator Damani Cross, Peter. Mm -hmm. Head coach Barry Odom is even more involved now as a result in coaching the defense. So what do we know about Barry Odom? He is, Peter, a former defensive coordinator. And as defensive coordinator at Mizzou, he inherited kind of a middling defense, just average. He transformed them into a top 10 total defense by yards per play allowed by his third year. And it got even better by his fourth year. They were a top three in the nation total defense. So they fired uh, Damani Cross. Damani Cross was not only the defensive coordinator, but by, as a position coach, 
He also coached the linebackers, specifically the inside linebackers. Well, Barry Odom is not only a former linebackers position coach himself, but he played linebacker at Mizzou. So basically, as I see it, Peter, with cross out and head coach Odom in as both defensive play caller and linebackers position coach, I see this as nothing but positive here. And if you think this is all about Mizzou, Purdue, looking at Purdue's total defense by yards per play allowed, they rank 110th right now in the country. And you might say, well, that's only because they played that high octane Louisville team in week one. That's not so. Versus Ohio at home last week, they allowed 5.91 yards per play. Now, that is something that would make uh, Mizzou's sophomore sensation running back, Demaria Crockett, just salivate. Last season, if, you, if this is not a household name yet, Demaria Crockett, if he continues on this trajectory, he absolutely will be soon. Last season, he's one of just six freshmen to rush for at least 1,000 yards. And of those six, Crockett had the best yards per carry average. And again, Peter, if you think, oh, that must have been against, you know, these junk schools, FCS opponents, and versus SEC competition, Peter, Crockett's average was 7.34 yards per carry against the SEC, Peter. 7.34 mm -hmm. yards per carry. This guy's a beast. He missed what happened last week. Where was that beast? He missed virtually all of the second half versus South Carolina last week. Due to a tailbone bruise, he's totally fine now. So look for him, this beast to be unleashed again. Now, betting data. So let's examine the betting data. Mizzou right now is an unpopular home favorite, a very unpopular home favorite. And that's pretty rare. They're a home favorite that currently, as we're recording this on Friday before tomorrow's game, they're getting less than 25% of the public betting on their side. Now, normally home favorites, to give you an idea, Peter, on average, they get between 61 and 62% if you're a home favorite. That's about the public betting. When a home favorite has gotten 25% or less, the last 15 seasons, Peter, again, pretty rare. But when it happens, they're 24-10-1 against the spread. That's 70.59% against the spread. And if you are thinking to yourself, as I often do when I hear these trends that go back so many seasons, don't, don't quote me trends from the last 15 seasons not relevant and perhaps it's not relevant now this trend again it doesn't happen often so let's look at the last five seasons it's happened just five times in the last five seasons an unpopular super unpopular home favorite has covered four of those last five times so that's 80 percent of the time and it only happened one time last year peter and guess who it happened to missouri exactly wow it was missouri as this unpopular home favorite against vanderbilt and they covered the spread. So they're one of the, they're the only one fit this category last season. And of course, they covered. So my conclusion, as you could tell, Peter, as of right now, mm -hmm. could change between now and kickoff. Uh, and and I, I would recommend personally waiting for more of that popular Purdue money to come in on game day tomorrow, pushing that line to maybe minus six and a half, possibly even better than that. But I like the Missouri side. I am going to wait for minus six and a half. But if all conditions remain the same, Peter, and this line is still at minus, minus seven, which is widely available, I still recommend betting it. Wow. Zoo, minus seven. Great breakdown, Steve. That's exactly what Steve does uh, so well. Understandable why Purdue is taking us uh, so much money, but uh, looking a little bit below the surface, maybe Missouri might be the good bet. And uh, that might, yeah, I can't imagine that this line is going to bounce back up to seven and a half. So probably uh, best uh, to wait. Right now, seven is widely available. Steve from collegefootballwinnie.com recommending a play on Missouri minus seven. Awesome breakdown, Steve. I might tell that one myself. Steve, for anyone who wants to know more about you, tell us what you do at collegefootballwinnie.com. Thank you, Peter. At collegefootballwinning.com, collegefootballwinning.com is a company that was founded uh, on the sole purpose of providing college football betting analysis, no other sport and no other league within the sport. We are a company, collegefootballwinning.com, founded on making betting recommendations using sets of algorithms. Those algorithmic betting recommendations we call our formula. That formula has a lifetime average of 60.16% against the spread. And, and unless you think oh, that that must have happened uh, a long time ago, last season, that same formula, 62.26% against the spread. 
That's all great news. The formula has not yet started. We need a, a certain amount of current season data before the formula kicks in. Hasn't started yet this season. But the bad news is right now, people cannot join us directly. There is a waiting list. So come to collegefootballwinning.com. You could put yourself on the waiting list and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Sounds great, Steve. Thanks so much for this great breakdown. Talk to you again very soon. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.